This gentle, gentleman here, that is Dr. Umar Johnson. The woman you saw, saw dancing earlier, that's called the conscious stripper. Dr. Umar Johnson was dating the conscious stripper. Here's the problem with Dr. Umar Johnson. He considered the black woman as God, which probably changed by now. And not only did he consider her God, that he also claimed to be celibate well he went to a strip club got into, saw this woman saw all of that booty shaking all over the place and uh got attached to her you know probably flipped some numbers but they were in a relationship now here's the thing they were in a monogamous relationship so dr umar johnson did nothing wrong in a sense, except saying that he was celibate and then turn around not being and choosing this black weaved woman with the booty as a mate. The reason number four that the black woman will destroy the vision of good men that's trying to elevate themselves or do something for the community, that's what this woman did. And they'll do it for popularity. They'll do, they'll destroy a man to make themselves look good or to bring recognition to themselves. So this is the vanity of the black woman. So in short, what happens is she takes all of their text messaging and puts them on her Facebook page and put all their business out in the public Facebook public which then brought this man down a bit he might be able to rise back up but this did damage to a school that he was trying to build for black boys and uh, this also hurt him on his, on the lecture circuit where he was teaching people about the scams that schools were doing and how to properly vet the schools that your children are going to and make sure that they're not diagnosing the children with things that they really don't have. As a psychologist, he was very, very familiar with these practices and were and was making people aware of what was going on as far as the school system. Something that is very, very needed in the black community. Well, that's what this conscious um, stripper, a black hair had it weave wearing big booty woman did and you know he was treating her well but see for most of these black women that's not enough again you good black women out there pay attention to this y'all gotta pay attention to this right so um yeah kind of Let's get into five on the selfish, um, selfish and self-centered black woman. All right. Um, but let's have an interlude here. There was a black woman um, that I know knew, kind of light-skinned woman, had two children, boy and a girl. Um, they were friends with uh, one of the children that I'm raising. And the children were. And the woman, you know, we, we kind of became friends. And she, probably not now, used to watch some of my videos. This woman came in, Trojan horse kind of thing, and was stealing my stuff. Stole my tools, stole um, watches, 
and stole a gun. Now, here's the problem with this woman. I wouldn't press charges. I hope they throw the book at her. Hate a thief. I work for something, and, and instead of this woman trying to get with a good black man, what she decides to do is run with thugs, be with thugs, not create stability for her children, but I'm going to steal from the one black man that is friend to that was friend to her and she's going to steal from the one black man whose children were close to her children right so instead of keeping them the her children around a black man that had structure and stuff she's going to steal from him instead of finding a black man that worked could have helped her out of her things if um she would commit to that black man. Nope. She wanted to commit to thugs and drug dealers and to the street game, even though she had children and she wanted to steal from good black men. So brothers need to be aware of women like this. Brothers really need to be aware of women like this. Women like that are trifling. They care nothing. They, they, they just really don't care about anything. It's just trifling. And, and it's sad that they would do all of this. Just steal, stole. Whatever they could get their hands on, they'll, they'll try to, again, because they don't care about good black men. They don't care about making anything happen with good black men. Um, they only care about destroying that black man in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Even if it destroys their children. All right. Now on WWAY 5, a lottery winner's fiance is out of jail on a $6 million bond. Thanks for joining us tonight. For Your News at 5, I'm Daniel Seamus. And I'm Mackenzie Henderson. It's a story that we broke first on 3 online this afternoon. Lottery winner Marie Holmes' fiance is out of jail again tonight. Uh, this after Lamar McDowell spent the past couple of weeks in jail on an alleged violation of pre-trial release. He was being held under a more than $6 million bond. WWAY senior reporter Alexa Block joins us live outside the jail in Bolivia with more in the big story at 5. Alexa. Now, Daniel, before his arrest a couple weeks ago, McDowell had been out of jail since March on a $3 million bond from a November drug bus. McDowell had nothing to say as he left jail today, headed to a car short, just a short time ago. In court last month, prosecutors said McDowell's fiance, Marie Holmes, was behind the bond that got him out the first time. That was just weeks after she had walked away with $88 million from a Powerball jackpot. The sheriff's office says a bondsman posted the bond that got McDowell out today, but bondsmen do not have to reveal who paid them to do it. Now, in addition to the drug charges from November, McDowell also faces a charge of possession of a firearm by a felon after investigators found a gun at the home in Shalot that he shares with Marie Holmes. In Bolivia, Alexa Block, WWAY News Channel 3. Mackenzie. Okay, thank you, Alexa. Now, this story has generated a lot of response on our Facebook page, including apparently from Marie Holmes herself. A comment from her account said, quote, what y'all need to be worried about is y'all money and not how I spend mine. This is benefiting y'all how, and no, he's no drug dealer or user, but who are y'all to judge anybody? I will definitely pray for y'all because it's much needed. They talked about Jesus, so I'm not surprised y'all are talking about me, but be blessed though, unquote. Is a picture of Marie Holmes, uh, the winner of all this money, who got up there like, oh, this is for my children. I have a special needs child and stuff. Four children, right? Uh, which gets to reason number five. Uh, selfish, self-centered, care only for black thugs. Like, black lives don't matter. Black thugs' lives matter. She cares only for black thugs. Not her children, not good black men. All right, so she will she bailed this man out of jail, bailed him out again, and this 
In another news report, this man she bailed out was a known gang member, and not in the, uh, with, with, he was certified as a gang member. So I'm gonna put that up later. But he was certified as a gang member. He was ser selling heroin, weed, all kind of things out of this house, out of her house, in the presence of her children, probably. All right, and they had a gun there. They needed to take all the children from her, uh, and she needs to pay a lawyer a lot of money to get her and her, him out of jail, if it comes down to it, so that he can go back in and stay there when she run out of money. I doubt this money will last any period of time, because reason number five, she's selfish, so she's going to spend most of that money on herself, fancy cars. Um, maybe a big old house that she's not going to be able to afford after five years. And for her boyfriend, um, he's going to run that into the ground. And they're probably going to be in a drug game really, really deep and oh, more dangerous people. But her children, they're not going to see that money. They're not going to see any of it. All right. So let's see. Let's see. Another case of this, right? Uh, you have Shanisha Taylor. She re, um, this is her mugshot. Uh, what happened was she went, quote unquote, on a job interview, left some children in the car. Somebody called the police. She ended up going to jail. White people felt sorry for her, gave her $114,000. And she was supposed to take at first 60,000 of it and give it um, put it in a trust fund for the children she did not do that then she went back to court and it was supposed to be 40,000 and she still didn't do it and so one of her art, most ardent supporter uh, Maupin he got upset and this was a quote that begins with so where's the money and I put zero spent on the children as instruction instructed but here's his quote the money is gone it's been spent it's been wasted here's the thing designer clothes michael kors designer jeans studio time for the thug who wasn't there to watch the children in the first place which got her into the mess she got into but he came back around and now on the receipt they got the six thousand dollars of studio time but there's no telling how much more money he got out of her from stuff that they cannot track. Like how much cash she gave him from time to time. How much? How many times she filled up his car. Car repairs or any other thing. That's who got most of that money. She and he. What did she put away for her children? Nothing. Um, she meant a quote. Uh, uh, she stated at one point that the children um, weren't going to need the money for college anyway. And I am inclined to agree with her. Because if that if she's going to be the mother raising them children, they don't have a chance with her. Now, black women take pride in humiliating black boys and black men. Um, I think this woman was going by the name of Leah Harris. But her name, real name is Aaliyah Islam. Now, for more on this, just type in black woman shaves black boy's head and uh, make it public for smoking weed. All right. Where did this boy get all these bad habits from? Well, either the simp or the pimp daddy married this stepmom. And I'll get to that in a minute. Married the stepmom. And the stepmom, who's probably around the boy the most, they're not raising him with any kind of morality. Because this stepmom doesn't have any morality. She a gold digging hoe, a whore, that um, is out to destroy the image of a man. And she's doing it by um, at childhood. So... Talk about poetic justice. This woman here, 
she gets caught up in a, a prostitution sting. And as you see, there's her name, Aliyah Islam. The Gilroy, um, excuse me, and this should be California Police Department, uh, they did an undercover uh, drug, um, prostitution sting. They caught her all up there. And so this woman whose vi video went viral of her giving her son the George Jefferson haircut and sending him to school like that turned out to be a prostitute. Turned out to be a hypocrite prostitute. Turned out to be a sorry role model for a child. Turned out to everybody is still wondering why this woman was raising another man's child and disciplining a boy child when the father is married to you. See, nobody can figure this out. No woman should be disciplining a, a, a male child. Unless they're the only one there, then you got to. But that should always be left up to the man if the man is present. All right. Um, we're tired of all these violent women wrecking havoc on black boys. So, um, number seven, they want black men to be their slave. In all of these care, in all of these cases, um, they think they can own and do anything they want to to black men, just as the white slave masters did during slavery. All right, the woman, the black woman, will take the black man before the law, to, like the black the slavery um, white men did. They'll gather up a, a female potsy. They'll falsely charge, make sure that the white people throw them in jail. Um, they'll raise them to be stupid and uneducated like the white people did to slaves. You know, we're not going to teach you to read, right? Or we're going to teach you only the, um, the things from our perspective so that you won't know who you are. Uh, the black boys have no identity uh, under the black woman. They make sure, a lot of them, make sure that that black man is not in that child's life at all so he can't gain an identity, know where he come from. All right. That's six, seven. They have no regard for the black men or the black children. All right. That's self-explanatory. They are selfish and think only on this, of themselves. They use black men for leverage and or money. So in all these cases before, that's summed up in this. All right. Now, here's the key. There are good black women out there. But most black women are so evil, they make even a good black women look bad. Why is this a problem? Because now, a black man really has to be very, very aware anytime he gets with any black woman for the fear that he might be with one of the most of these sorry black women that's only out for his destruction. The sad part is that good black woman has to bear the brunt of all the negative treatment or all the negative um, things that come at black women that has been done by evil black woman, she's going to have to bear that. And she's going to have to deal with those consequences. And that's not fair to the good black woman. But then again, all you good black woman, you need to join the man and stand up and start speaking out against the sorry black women, against the evil black women. And until you, the good black women, stop being in solidarity with the bad black women, in silence is solidarity. Not wanting to get involved is solidarity. Not wanting to, wanting to join up with the good black men to combat this, to combat the thugs, all right, to combat the niggas, and to combat the hoes, the whores, the bitches, the ones that call themselves that. Until you do that, until we join together, the good black women 
are going to have to deal with the brunt of what's happening with black men is because and it is because of this that the black women that are this evil they're taking away your protection good black women the good black women that want real protection they're eliminating it so that all black women are exposed to the evil of most black women with that said i'm out